Hey everybody, welcome to our channel Homeschool Honey. In today's activity we are doing some forensic science dealing with fingerprinting. We wanted to find out the best ways to take our fingerprints, the different styles of fingerprints, and how fingerprints are used to detect a crime or to find out who committed the crime. So to get started, gather these things. A white balloon or a light color where you can see the fingerprint. Paper, tape, an ink pad, and a magnifying glass. Next, you'll make sure that your hands are clean and dry and free from debris. If we thought our fingerprints were all the same or what kinds of fingerprints we thought we might have. So that was kind of an interesting conversation to have with the kids. So it's a good idea to get some practice runs going with your fingerprinting because it took a little bit of practice and even once we got the hang of it, it was still hard for them to get a good fingerprint read. So you'll get lots of ink on your finger and then we learned you've got to do one roll and then lift it up, not just a press down. And then here you'll see Michael tries rolling it back and forth, but when you do that it smudges the lines. So you've got to get one good roll and lift to get one stamp of your fingerprint on the page. So a few more practice runs and lift. We got it. Let's practice over here and lift. We got it. Good job. So once we've got that done and we've really practiced getting our fingerprint done, we got a form for each one of our fingers. We talked about what our different fingers were called and then we created. <laughs> See, we still didn't get 100% uh, roll and lift on these, but with practice we got a little bit better. And then not to fear when, when there were mess ups, we just rolled down below and we drew an arrow up. And if you're a child, one of my kids was really struggling to get a good print. Uh, I'll show you another way that you can get a fingerprint without having to have them roll it on the paper. So you'll take a piece of tape, get their finger all inky, and then same thing with rolling and lifting. You want one impression, don't lift it, don't smudge it, one, and then lift it off, boom. And then you're done with your fingerprint impression there. So we got that, then we just went to the arrow for the correct finger and put it there. And my other one wanted to try it as well, so we got another fingerprint impression with the tape. Voila! And there we have it. So at this point we talked about the different ways that fingerprints are formed, whether they have arches, loops, or whirls. So the kids got to take a look at theirs and figure out what kind of fingerprints they had. And now on to our mystery. I could have done this better with two balloons, but I only have the one. So I had them create a fingerprint, one on each side of the balloon, and we are going to compare the fingerprint with theirs to see which one, who, which belonged to which kid. So what we learned was when we were blowing up the balloon, um, we blew it up really, really big. And when we blew it up too big, the fingerprint totally disappeared. But when we let some of that air out here, you can see we're starting to get a better image of it. So it blew it up. It was really cool because then we could really see the fingerprint in more detail, a lot bigger. We talked about how Forensic officers have to work with uh, partial prints sometimes, those detectives. So then we took the time to compare our index fingerprints with the print on the balloon and discussed why we thought one or the other belonged to the each child. Let me know down in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you think you'll try it with your kids. My kids really enjoy talking about forensic science fingerprinting, and the different styles of fingerprints. Thanks so much, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.